Hello and welcome to the new Adobe Photoshop CS, part of the new Adobe Creative Suite. What we're going to do today is take a look at the highlights of the new features of the Adobe Photoshop CS and Image Ready CS. Although we won't get a chance to look at every single new feature, we'll get a chance to look at the ones that are the most compelling. First of all, when you start off opening Adobe Photoshop CS, you'll notice that you get a new welcome screen. The welcome screen is there to help users get started with the new features, to learn some tips and tricks from the experts, even to set up color management, and of course to view the new feature highlights and new features at a glance. Once you're satisfied with um, all the things that you can learn here, you can simply turn this dialog box off so that it never comes up again for the more experienced users. So I'm going to go ahead and close this window. I will leave it on for the next time, just in case I hadn't got a chance to go through all these. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring up the File Browser. Now normally we would just simply go up to File and Browse, and that would bring up the File Browser. Since I'm working at a reduced resolution, I'm going to go ahead and hit the Tab key to uh, temporarily hide my palettes. The File Browser was a part of Photoshop 7. But in Photoshop CS, it has gotten a ton of new capabilities and new features. So for example, the first thing we can do, um, as you noticed before in the file browser, you could just simply rearrange your guides and your windows to make your preview area larger. But now, instead of having to constantly rearrange this and shift this, you can go ahead and just simply double click on the folder tabs to get a bigger preview area. So when I'm clicking on a vertical image versus a horizontal image, I can see much more um, much more of the image. Also, the image previews in the new Photoshop CS file browser are high resolution. Now, one of the other things we can do in this case is we can also set up workspaces now for the file browser. So, for example, I have a workspace called File Browser Normal View, or FB Normal View, and when I click that, it basically returns the file browser back to the way it was when, it, uh, when I first brought it up. And I also have another workspace set up. We'll go ahead and choose that maximum view. And what that will do is give me a much larger um, preview area, especially for working on images that are, in this case, horizontal. So you can set up as many different workspaces as you want for the file, for the file browser as well as Photoshop in general. So I'm going to go back to normal. And the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and talk about uh, some of the other things that we can do with images in the file browser. For example, the thumbnail views that you've been using in the file browser up until this point were dictated to you by Adobe. So you had a small view, a medium view, a large view, but now we have this custom thumbnail size. So if I go up to my edit menu and choose preferences in the file browser, I can now tell the file browser what size custom thumbnail I want to use. And you notice that we have this little double arrow that when we actually highlight the name, we can just drag left or right to uh, increase or decrease the size of the thumbnail preview. That's a feature that actually came over from Adobe After Effects and Adobe Premiere. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK on the, my, new file my new thumbnail size for the file browser of 270 pixels. However, nothing changed. That's because we're still viewing this with a large size. So we're going to go ahead and now choose my new custom size. And now my thumbnails are 270 pixels wide. So I can have nice big thumbnails or nice little thumbnails. The size is up to you, but now you get to pick your own size in addition to the sizes that uh, come with Photoshop. So I'm going to go back to a large view. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select some images. I'm going to go scroll down here. We have some models that we want to select. So I'm going to select this one. I'm going to hold down my Command key on the Mac. Or if you're on a PC, it would be the Control key. And we're going to just select various um, different versions of our model that we're going to be working with today. One of the other things that we can do inside the file browser now is we can flag images. So I can go ahead with these images selected. Here, let's do it again. I must have clicked outside of the image area there. We can go ahead and flag these images. And you notice now they have little flags next to them. That allows me to go in and view the flagged images or the non-flagged images or both. And with this feature, this allows me to quickly get to the images that I want to look at, sort of like having my own electronic light box inside the computer. 
So we can also go in, let's go ahead and do my unflagged for a moment, so these are all the other images. And if you had your own lightbox, you'd be able to just simply pick up an image and move it around. And now you can do that inside of the file browser inside of Photoshop CS. So you don't have to live by the file name order anymore. You can just simply rearrange these images to your heart's content and put them in the order that you want to view them in. The next thing we'll do is we'll go back to our um, view of the flagged images. And I'll pick one of the images. And you'll notice that now we have this new metadata uh, area over here in the file browser. And not only do we get to see the metadata like we did in Photoshop 7, but now we get to interact with it. So for example, if I scroll down here, we have copyright. Well, I can actually click into the copyright fill, and I can say 2003 Wayne Roth for that image. And we can do it on multiple images. So for example, I can select, let's do all of these, and for the copyright information, yes, I know I want to edit more than one. We'll go ahead and do that. And it's just giving me warnings there that I'm doing this to more than one image. I'll go ahead and uh, edit that copyright information for each one of these. So now that information is being added to each one of the images. That's a big time saver. As before in Photoshop 7 on down, you would have to open up each image, go into the file info, and put that information in manually, one by one. Now you don't have to do that anymore. You can do them all at once. You can also assign keywords. So for example, um, I can go into a particular image, and we have this new keyword area. So for example, I might want to select these images, and I'll assign them the headshot keyword. Again, it's letting me know I'm doing it to multiple images. I'm going to go ahead and turn that warning off. And yes, I've assigned that headshot keyword to multiple images. And why is that important? Because now, inside of Photoshop CS, you can search your metadata. You can search your keywords. You can basically use this as kind of your own personal asset management to find images that match particular characteristics that you're looking for. So I can even search the subfolders that are in the main folder. And I can search based on any of these um, particular criteria. So for example, if I go to keywords and I say that it contains headshot, it would only bring up the images that contain the keyword headshot. Not only the ones I just did, but in including some of the other ones that I didn't have selected. So it's still working and still bringing up images that contain the, he the keyword head headshot. No matter if it's in the main folder or if it's down deep into other folders. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is we'll go in and let's view, or actually let's go back and view our flagged files. And with our flagged images, what we want to do is now we want to create, um, using some of the new automation features, a contact sheet in this case. So with these images, I'll go ahead and select them. With these images selected, I'll go up to my Automate menu, which is now right inside the file browser, and I can choose things like a PDF presentation, which we'll get to later, contact sheet. I can even go into online services such as Shutterfly.com and upload my images for high-quality prints. So we'll go back to contact sheet. We'll pick that. And I can go ahead and design my own contact sheet. So for example, I've got a setting here from my last experience, which is basically a 4 inch by 4 inch uh, image that is 200 pixels per inch. And what I want to do is basically create a jewel case cover of my six images. So if I go ahead and click OK, Photoshop CS will automatically open up each image, and it will automatically place them inside the uh, 4 by 4 inch area that I dictated. It's a huge time saver for being able to do that right inside the file browser instead of having to constantly go in and work with folders. So there's my contact sheet ready to print.